Hi, um, so I just want to do a quick little study of Africa. I uh, start off by uh, looking at the entire Earth, and uh, basically I've been looking at continent by continent, and even country by country. Um, but so there's a lot of data that I've been collecting over the past year, and just wanted to discuss what is going on in Africa specifically. So. Perhaps the easiest way to start understanding what's going on in Africa is to look at the population map. Um, and there are a bunch of them out there. Uh, one of the ones that I like better are the web-based interfaces ones. So you can kind of see uh, what's going on here in Africa relative to the rest of the world. So obviously most of the population is in India and China. And then in Africa, there's basically a bunch of groups here. So there's basically this West African region. There's kind of two separate regions here uh, in East Africa. Um, and then there's kind of like a third, fourth, and even coastal region, and even Madagascar. And even parts of this, you might even consider um, connected to Africa. And then there's this whole region over here, kind of Morocco area. Uh, more Mediterranean so uh, that can give you a good idea of where it might be fun to live and work uh, because that's where the people are here's kind of a zoom in and kind of see a little bit more detail of the sub cities and kind of how Nigeria is kind of a focus here but by no means even though the population shows that Nigeria is uh, the largest country there I would say there's quite a lot of people all over um, but when you compare it to uh, Europe or America, uh, you can see it's probably a little bit more like Europe is just tons of people uh, in Central Europe and even in India. But Africa has quite a lot of open area in the center there. Um, other way that I thought was really interesting is to kind of look at the ethno-linguistic map. Um, so this you can kind of see there's this uh, people that kind of speak and look similarly um, all throughout this region and then there's kind of like a bunch of different areas even in South Africa and up in here so it gets pretty complex surprisingly I would say um, even though Ethiopia and Eastern Africa has a lot of variation in geography it looks like the population and the uh, differences in the people are really created by the desert um, which is kind of a surprise to me. And then you got this whole Madagascar piece over here. Um, so here's another way to look at that same map, vaguely similar, but you kind of have this area of West Africa and then these Eastern African. And then it's kind of surprising because right in this area about Uganda, you have this uh, kind of like group of people that uh, transitions into the desert. So the des desert transition really is very abrupt right here. Um, and then there's kind of like some more complexities in these regions and then you can kind of see these two subgroups for South Africa and then, uh, just above it um, and there's other ways to look at that as well so there's this the uh, um, uh, just totally different ways so um, now this might surprise you to look at this kind of map so this is the open infrastructure map.org I really like this for helping to understand I'm not sure Usually it's pretty accurate, um, but you can kind of see where the infrastructure is. So this is like the electrical lines. So you can see quite a lot of electrical work being done in Northern Africa and then kind of over here in Eastern Africa, some long distance stuff and then something even going across the Congo. And you can see basically the South Africa part uh, centered around Johannesburg, which is interesting. Whereas in Brazil, it's centered primarily around Sao Paulo. Uh, and then Rio over here, but basically Sao Paulo for all of South America, which is kind of surprising. And then even on the East Coast, you can kind of see LA, Seattle, uh, maybe Chicago, but actually really some other stuff going on uh, kind of on the East Coast being uh, pretty complicated. So the East Coast being a lot more like uh, Europe, uh, or even this being like Europe, but Africa being uh, actually quite different and unusual kind of electricity grid, except for maybe like far Eastern Europe, almost into Russia, um, being kind of uh, similar for the electrical grid. So uh, the nice part about this is you can really zoom in. I can try to zoom in a little bit more here to show you kind of the great detail that this gets into. Uh, you can even see uh, the, uh, it looks like uh, to me that most of the interesting stuff would be going on on the Mediterranean. So let's just look at that. 
but you can kind of see some more detail here. And uh, if you zoom in even more, let's go into Egypt because that's going to be the uh, craziest kind of electrical uh, grid here. So we can see what's going on. It will slowly zoom in here and you can see Cairo. That's how they say Cairo probably in their language. Um, so you can start to see some of the power generators in uh, Cairo and some other things. And then they have even some details of the other electrical lines and different kinds of bridges and all kinds of things. So kind of give you an idea where uh, how the electricity works. So you can see there's kind of the central Cairo piece, kind of a coastal piece over here and some other stuff. So super interesting. You can even zoom in way more than that. They got even more detail. Uh, but we want to kind of look at the general picture of Africa, not just Egypt. But Egypt is a huge part of Africa. So this is also super interesting. If you're interested in the internet, you can kind of see how the internet works in Africa. Definitely a West African African piece is kind of where the internet is primarily worked. And then there's a super important fiber optic line running right through Egypt here and down through the ocean and then back out into Asia. So this, so actually Eastern Africa is very well linked, but not at least in terms of the fiber optic cabling uh, right into this main channel that goes into Europe and Asia. So actually the internet is quite a lot better than you might think on this coast because this actually has to hop all the way through Europe and then go around or maybe there might be something across the continent. But uh, but basically you can see that's the global infrastructure for the internet in Africa. Um, and you can click on each one of these, which is great, and they can give you tell you who the ISP is and some more details. Um, I thought this was helpful because this shows kind of the uh, problems in GDP per capita. Um, so you can kind of see uh, Africa is actually quite poor and most of the problems being here in uh, Somalia and then you got Mozambique uh, and then Sudan, South Sudan. So they basically divided this into Sudan and South Sudan and this is Uganda right here. So this is quite poor. So when you see $68,000 a year and then you got $400 a year. So that's quite a gap. and. Uh, you know, you, you kind of have, uh, but in, the average Indian is making about twice what the average African is, right? And these are, uh, but the Northern African countries are doing quite a lot better. So you can see these guys are doing better than India and then South Africa and so on. And then there's a little uh, countries in here, Gabon and uh, Republic of Congo surprisingly doing well. So if you compare this to Brazil, 7,000, uh, Brazil's doing quite well. Um, and Africa, you can see Botswana doing about a little bit better than Africa. So that's maybe because of mining and some other things. So, uh, and uh, this is a general map that I just wanted to look at. We're gonna probably have to come back to that. Um, but here you can kind of see this uh, global economic complexity map uh, showing where the and what kinds of uh, economic activity is being done in the region and it's just dropping dots for each project and you can see uh, what that is and you can zoom in but you can basically see South Africa being a heavy chunk of the industry here in Nigeria and then up here and then Egypt having kind of a pretty diverse uh, types of industry but basically South Africa kind of running the industry here and then even uh, up here in Morocco having a pretty interesting industry and then kind of some scattered points. So you can kind of say uh, where there might be uh, a good future. Um, and certainly Madagascar would be an interesting place to look at uh, for industry. So this is economic, Atlas of Economic Complexity, but a kind of a visualization of that. Um, and then this is each of the products down here. So uh, what you can do here is this is agriculture exports, right? So. You can see for agriculture, South Africa is kind of doing its best there. And then you can load up another one. So like, let's say you're interested in the electronics industry. So electronics industry, you can see Morocco, Egypt, and South Africa exporting some stuff. And uh, if you grab services, you can see these are the services countries. So you can kind of see again, Egypt, Morocco, and that kind of aligns up with uh, the other one. Um, so if you want to look at services over time, 
uh, you can kind of graph this too and there is also a tree so you can see Africa has a very small slice here of what's going on in terms of exports uh, the tree map is quite interesting uh, because it kind of breaks down where uh, who exported what uh, by country but the global map is probably the best way to look at this so we'll do one more just to uh, see what's going on so uh, electronics and another really good one to look at is uh, minerals so we'll just look at minerals really quick and you can see um, in terms of minerals Nigeria has that with the oil and then you hear Algeria and so the this is kind of like a mineral region and, and you could kind of argue that and Algeria having quite a lot of exports here with uh, about 31 billion uh, so um, another way to take a look at things is to uh, go to the Africa article on Wikipedia scroll to the very bottom of the page as you can see I'm scrolled down here and you can just click show and hide and then you can get all the articles for Africa if you're interested in specific things right so they got society economy politics geography and the general history uh, so here's the main problem that uh, is interesting in Africa is basically the slice so it's basically about 2% of the global wealth um, and then also you can see um, mortality rates so basically uh, unsafe water sanitation hygiene problems like this so you can see that there's kind of a slice in here so this is kind of more Eastern Africa and kind of the uh, higher end stuff being down in here and even up in North Africa being uh, actually quite good equivalent to the rest of the world in terms of those categories so um, and then by population you can kind of see the breakdown here so Nigeria being about 15 percent Ethiopia so this is a big surprise I would say that Ethiopia is slightly larger than Egypt and that Egypt even when you look on the global map uh, and Democratic Republic Congo so many people being in the Congo is also a huge surprise um, because it's basically like living in the jungle so quite a lot of people are living in the jungle uh, in terms of the major locations and then you see Tanzania uh, being an uh, interesting one to see there but uh, actually Tanzania is probably my favorite country in Africa um, it's right on the Great Lakes and got some cool stuff so Kenya actually being a surprise to me personally because it's kind of a dry place. Uganda uh, has a great lake there and actually quite a small country but quite a lot of people living there. And then Sudan being a super big surprise because it's a uh, desert and actually most people living in other parts of Africa. So you can uh, uh, sort this and you can also see by growth rate. So uh, different areas, Uganda growing quite fast. Um, and different things so uh, and uh, next is the human development index so uh, this is super important because uh, the higher you are up on this the better you are so Algeria being uh, the best and Angola and kind of just going down the roof here so Cameroon has some friends there and you can see uh, basically what the human development index is relative uh, so uh, this is a very uh, important number and I'll say uh, comparing this and you can see that uh, doesn't always equate to the uh, GDP per capita right so and I think well it's not sorted by here let's do this uh, yes yeah, so these are the uh, a little bit tricky because it's not quite in order but you can see uh, basically the uh, GDP per capita in these sorry about that so uh, this country here being uh, quite good with thirty thousand uh, dollars per year right uh, so each one of these would be worthwhile some of the uh, higher ones so if you do economy of Africa on Wikipedia you can get that and then they also have a bunch of maps on the right that you can kind of look through uh, but I liked this little uh, African nations chart uh, human development index as well so it uh, looks like we got a map showing a uh, human development index there um, and kind of comparing um, and actually let's just open that up really quick see if we can take a look at this so that kind of shows what's going on right so 
these dark areas uh, being the most developed and you can kind of see uh, some spots right in here and uh, Egypt actually being pretty developed and right in here a little spot so pretty interesting little map and you can get some more details on the rest of those maps there um, so there's a whole article on poverty in Africa I thought this was kind of interesting uh, but it's a fertility map so you can kind of see uh, some of these places having uh, seven kids per person and then in Europe uh, basically having uh, less than two or one and then the United States being less than two or one as well so uh, but you can kind of see pretty interesting just look at the fertility map uh, and internet so this is the uh, internet used at a percentage of the country's population so basically you have nobody using the internet in some parts of Africa which is kind of interesting right so this is the jungle no one's using the internet in the jungle but about 50 percent here are using it uh, in Brazil so you can kind of see uh, basically certain countries Nigeria actually having quite a lot of internet users about it, the same as Italy or Greece right um, which is interesting uh, and uh, then you have these like weird little spots so but basically I would say 25 percent uh, to 50 percent and maybe even zero percent in some regions so you can kind of see right here and I do know a friend of mine in Uganda he's a very active poster and he does internet all the time and I actually questioned him about that I was like hey man it seems like you're doing a lot of internet be careful so a pretty interesting map just uh, internet in Africa and you can take a look at that here um so and then here's uh by gdp so this is not necessarily gdp per capita but uh, uh you can sort this by gdp per capita and you can see and this is the number one and so on but uh so you basically have uh so gdp per capita per person is a little different right so nigeria egypt south africa and we vaguely saw that in this map, right? So you can see uh, basically South Africa, right? And uh, Nigeria and Egypt, but it doesn't quite match up with this number, right? So you can kind of see Nigeria is actually number one, Egypt is number two, South Africa, and so on. Um, but it is interesting to see, and you can kind of see uh, this again here. So basically these are in the ballpark regions uh about the same right so but uh, i would say it looks like south africa and uh, egypt and these guys are doing pretty good this is kind of a little surprise right here which would be uh, kenya and i just was talking with some guy from kenya today actually so and you can kind of see uh by uh, segments here um, so that's pretty helpful to take a look at um, and also, uh, this is super interesting. If you have a chance just to look at list of Africans by net worth, I went through and clicked on everybody to try to see, but you can basically see the wealthiest person in Africa is from Nigeria. He's from this. this is basically a sugar company started it. And then you have uh, this person uh, from South Africa being the second wealthiest and pretty close, but actually a billion dollars more is quite a lot. So maybe this uh, guy from Nigeria. So that's really good news for Nigeria uh, and actually for all of Africa because South Africa is so far from Central Africa and Nigeria is kind of well positioned. So again, having a wealthy person in Egypt is kind of strange, uh, but you can see uh, this is a construction company. And then you have uh, this another person from Nigeria uh, also uh, working on telecom and it uh, looks like he's doing petroleum as well so uh, uh, but it's nice that a food company is actually well he also does concrete and some other things but it's nice to see that a food company is the uh, wealthiest guy in Africa that's pretty different than almost any other place I can think of it's a vast continent and the wealthiest person is pretty much involved in food um, and then the rest of these are kind of some other things so you can see uh, Switzerland luxury, luxury goods and some other things and you got uh, this guy uh, in Algeria and it's another food and retail industry and then you have an Egyptian company here um, that looks pretty interesting and uh, so on another Egyptian company so these numbers do change and it looks like I was looking at the old numbers but uh, still seem 
pretty much the same except for uh, this guy right here so shows up uh, but uh, certainly worthwhile clicking on all these guys seeing what they look like what they're up to um, and uh, just uh, what they're doing so you can go through and kind of see um, basically who these people are uh, this guy looks pretty interesting from Egypt so uh, but uh, anyway so uh, and then on this these are all the stock exchanges so I sorted this by listings so one of the reasons I got involved interested in Africa was trying to invest I invested in a couple Egyptian companies and also even in Turkey because it's very close to Africa but there's some pretty good companies in Turkey actually so a lot like California and actually maybe even better than California in some ways so <clears throat> You can see that South Africa in Johannesburg. So this is not a typical part of South Africa, but the stock market is actually in Johannesburg. So uh, there's also a lot of infrastructure. If you looked at the infrastructure map, there's a lot of people there. And you see Nigeria having a lot, but actually needing more. So one of the problems in Africa is it's so many different countries, and it would be nice to see a kind of like a generalized stock exchange for all of these and they could probably do that just by getting together Egypt with South Africa and Nigeria and even uh, Morocco and these guys just get those countries together form a stock exchange they don't necessarily have to use the NASDAQ looks like they're using this Millennium Information Technology company to do this um, and uh, these are all the stock exchange index names so each one of these would be worthwhile to look at. So what I would do is pretty much take a look at the currencies. I don't really have time in the video, but you could look at the South African currency, the Egyptian currency, Nigerian currency, and Morocco, and maybe a few others in here, and look at that. Or you could also plot it by GDP or GDP per capita and take a look at that as some data. So ease of doing business, you can see uh, kind of interesting. I actually really like this map because Nine Nations and World Bank, I guess, is involved with this, and you can see uh, they're saying America, Australia is pretty easy, but there's certain pockets that look pretty difficult to do business in, but you can see the pockets that are good um, and kind of see uh, what that means. So if you look at how they calculate this, it's it's kind of, uh, they have like uh, 1,200, 12,000 different people contribute to this data. So it's a lot of people that have studied this information and uh, it's hard for me to even appreciate how valuable that map is. So there's also this uh, etiquette of African business. So uh, you know you can see you got a guy here doing uh, some business or talking with someone, and uh, different kinds of etiquette would be interesting to think about. So um, and then you got uh, the Human Development Index. So again, uh, ease of doing business, but they have Human Development Index. That other map really does include a lot of stuff for the ease of doing business, so I definitely recommend that. But um, And then list of countries by GDP per capita. So you can kind of see, again, uh, you know, basically South Africa and some pockets in here. And the interesting thing about this, the equator runs right through here, and it's just so hot, right? And so it may be almost unbearable, except for a couple pockets in here in the mountain range, you can basically find spots uh, to live and work or even make some friends at and you can see uh, these are the world bank numbers and you can kind of plot it by country but it's nice to just have a whole map so you can see a lot of people in the red zones basically making a thousand dollars per year which is really tough um, and you can even see parts of uh, Asia with India struggling even to this day so basically why that is that's got to change um, and you can see again this human development index and i think they really i've studied what they did i looked at some of the calculations and the human development index is actually very precise and careful carefully thought about uh, but in general a great map can also help so this is a really important map so i i thought it would be funny to look at this with you because you kind of see so this is shipping but you can kind of start to see where and why certain areas are important so south africa have had a lot of economics there and you can kind of see well egypt there's a lot of boat traffic that has to go through there and then maybe some other boat traffic here and then this being a nice little resting spot for some boats but being quite hot and from what i understand if you dock in here you can get malaria you can get sick and it's uh, it could be tough uh, for uh, diseases 
uh, just because you're close to the jungle, so be careful about this. But these are all ports too, so you can see all the little ports being a ton of ports here, a ton of ports here, and surprisingly few ports here. And I really wonder what's going to happen, how that might change. So South Africa being the most ideal port, I would say, but just so far to get to South Africa uh, from anywhere else, you are just got to be focused on getting there. So, And it's just so expensive to get through these uh, Suez Canal. I, I have heard it's like $4,000 just to get through the Panama Canal on a sailboat. I don't know what it is for the Suez, but imagining similar kind of fee. Here's kind of the river system you can see in Central Africa. So the Congo is quite a big river here. And the Nile also being huge as well. You can do a little search map of African rivers and kind of see. And the reason also this is important is just where would people like to live? It's kind of nice to live near a river. Um, and this is a major road system map. So you can kind of see how the road system works. So they basically got this uh, along the coast here. This might be a really fun drive actually, just doing the whole Mediterranean drive. You could probably learn a lot about Africa, but then you realize you know nothing about Africa by the time you get to Dakar, and it's a whole new world going through this part of Africa. And then even here, you can't really drive the coast, but they do have like this major road here. And I heard about a guy from the United Nations trying to get a um, tractor up here and they basically shipped it into Cape Town and he tried to drive it all the way up here. And it is not straightforward roads. So he says unpaved and that means really unpaved because once you get back into the jungle and the mud, um, it just is not a road. So I would say, I, but it's interesting just to see the map of what is actually possible and what people are trying to do. Now this is a live traffic map, so you can also see some of the traffic here. They get into a lot of detail, so you can see Egypt having uh, traffic, and then here's Johannesburg. So again, we saw the stock market, Cape Town, and kind of this whole traffic, traffic zone. So this is one of the most odd things about having a city up in here, and it may be just because of the temperature that a lot of people like it because it's not near the equator and so on, but uh, another kind of traffic map. If you're interested, you can do infrastructure in Africa and look at that in great detail. They got rail transport, roads in Africa, ports in Africa, water supply, and so on. Um, and uh, it looks like I've timed out of this, so I'm just going to reload that and show you the flight map. But uh, this is a water map, so you can kind of see where they're struggling. So obviously in the desert, struggling for water. Um, and doing pretty good actually in West Africa, um, even better than Europe, you'd say. So the water supply is quite good in West Africa and quite good along the Great Lakes. It would have to be good because you have a lake there. Um, so basically, and then even Ethiopia being pretty good, but actually surprisingly bad water, not some major water problems here in East Africa. So, uh, and even in South Africa right here. So maybe that's one of the reasons why Johannesburg is so popular. Water problems are pretty, a little bit better, but it looks like very serious right around there. So Madagascar being overall very good. So except for this Western coast, and that's just because it's dry desert, uh, but certainly you can zoom in and study this in great detail. Um, and I'll just zoom in so you can see kind of uh, what's going on there. Um, now these maps are the climate maps and I really like a couple of these in particular because it shows the cloud coverage and I'll just load this up. It's going to try to take a little while. So you can see the average clouds over the years. So you can see kind of like cloudy areas here and kind of fluctuating up and down with the uh, season. And you, it just, this is an awesome, awesome little this thing. And then you also got the precipitation so you can see kind of what's that how that's changing over the months and uh, it certainly goes up and then goes down so basically there's kind of a threshold and it kind of comes along the water here and actually surprisingly not a whole lot of water down here in South Africa but you can see a little tip there always getting a little bit of water so that's kind of nice to know about little little facts secrets that you can kind of discover about the whole thing and then here's the average climate so you can see uh, basically 60 degrees in these yellow regions so that's about like California you can see a California climate kind of coming along here and then maybe even cooler here just outside of Johannesburg kind of a nice little spot to know about and also up in Ethiopia which is why people like to live there uh, but being super hot 
man, you're just really hot in West Africa and then also the coastline of this being almost too hot. So if I was thinking about this, I would have to reconsider visiting Africa and that's why Tanzania or whatnot uh, is so popular as well as Sydney down here and some other regions. Uh, but this is a super interesting. It's just the annual average temperature map. And it's high resolution data, so you can look at it in detail. Then you can see average annual precipitation, so you can see like some spots. It is really nice to get rain, so you can kind of, we saw that in the other chart. Uh, but there's certainly little pockets that get a lot of rain. And actually, this is kind of surprising, right? So you see almost three meters of rain. It's like a ton of rain here in Cameroon. And that would just be almost worth going there just to experience that kind of rain um, and this is a really great map because it shows you all of the uh, geography and if you zoom in you can also get some towns I wish they could do this so that you, you can kind of see some of the weird little mountains here in Africa and kind of see this and actually I really like these mountainous areas I think it's what makes areas really fun when it's super flat it's kind of boring but so that's one of the troubles with West Africa here is it's uh, kind of Got a lot of flatness to it but right in here in Cameroon you got this tallest mountain here and then you also got uh, you know these cool little mountains here and I think that's why a lot of people like Kenya and some other areas but this Great Lakes area is the region that I'm most interested in and also up in Uganda Uganda and then up into Ethiopia and it looks like Egypt might be interesting over on this part here and of course all of this would be great. So actually it's one of the reasons why this is so wealthy is just it's got nice little mountain ranges and Mediterranean climate. And then here's the geology. So kind of matching with some of the uh, what's going on, but you can kind of see similar geographic regions. It's really detailed. So you'd have to zoom into this really carefully and you can see not a whole lot of fault lines. There's just one major fault line running through here. Um, I have a separate video on that, but looks like uh, it's kind of taking a little while to load. So, and then there's a soil map too, so you can kind of see what the soil is. So you can see the kind of the jungle. There's like this little piece of soil here. So this is just soilgrades.org, and an absolutely fabulous map to see uh, because if you like a certain type of soil. Uh, you might uh, want to have a small farm or work with some farmers and kind of see the similar soil to uh, some of the jungle here, but then there's uh, kind of some changes. But this is one of the reasons why I like Ethiopia and Uganda is just the variety of soil types. And then trees, you can also see kind of where the trees are. So you can see this little section in here kind of being heavily forested and actually Europe being uh, totally not forested. So you can kind of see that their actually deforestation has happened in a lot of these areas here, um, just like in Europe. Uh, but you can, again, zoom in and see more details there. These are all really cool map from USGS showing all the mines. So you can kind of see uh, Mr. Data, USGS.gov, and get a plot of all the mines all over. You can see there's some uh, mines in here that are kind of unusual little pathway of some mines, but the fault line basically runs right down through here and then stops suddenly right around in here or something. And you kind of makes you wonder why there's uh, some mines over here and the fault lines are a little bit different. Um, but, uh, and I think this is the total light map, which I probably should talk so this amount of light that you get. So you get a lot of light here and here and so on. Uh, but cool map to see. And then another version of that same mine map so you can kind of see what this is and just uh, simplified version you can also download that electromagnetic field line so you can kind of see the declination your compass line will work right along here um, and actually i've felt uh, that the climate is very much related to this so you can look in the detail i actually love these maps a lot um, and then you can see these are kind of the more of the climate maps in detail but if you look up uh, vegetation you have to look up specifically vegetation not climate and this is the type of vegetation so it's a little bit like soil but different vegetation I'm almost done here and then list of all the African billionaires you can kind of go through Forbes and see who they all are they've got some good pictures and uh, looks like he's got 12 billion according to Forbes uh, construction diamond luxury goods telecom so it's pretty much the same 
diversified uh, but it's gonna be pretty much the same kind of data and then this is also the map here so you can see this is zero field so this means the compass works and the clouds kind of sometimes fall along these lines um, because it's uh, but you can see this is like a slight shift on of the compass on either side and then they got a whole lot of other detailed maps like that that you can look at and I actually um, this is one of the main reasons that I studied this whole project um, there's also a topic of youth in Africa which would be interesting to discuss and then you can see uh, World Health Organization has a lot of health related maps and uh, morality dates maybe are certain areas dangerous and then there's basically socioeconomic data so uh, so I hope that you have enjoyed uh, studying uh, this topic on Africa um, I've been wanting to do I, I can't believe I haven't studied this in more detail but there's a lot of details I mean you can go into uh, just certain areas right West Africa there's this whole Eastern Africa chunk there's just a whole lot of other areas and research to do um, but this will hopefully get you started let me know if you have any questions I'd love to talk to you about what's going on in Africa maybe you have some good ideas interesting things that I missed or something that, that was a little bit should look into i'd be glad to take a look at it with you see you later john